Long ago, before the beginning of time, life began to transform the inanimate planet. The process took billions of years, and the Earth has changed. An atmosphere, plants, and animals appeared. Then man made his first steps. He soon learned to use the power of fire. He gained power over natural elements, created the first technologies, and the world began to change again. Man has subdued water, which provided power to the grindstones of mills. The earth, processed by the plow, began to feed him in abundance. The air filled his sails and carried him through its ponds. He went deep into the earth interior and managed to turn its treasures into fuel for his fires, tamed the electron, wrapped the earth with wires that began to supply light and heat into the homes, created machines that helped him to become even stronger. Just as life had once adjusted the inanimate world to itself, technology was then adjusting life to itself. The planet has changed again beyond recognition, and man began to command even the smallest particles, and everything around began to serve man. Until once, when the conquered nature rebelled and extorted him. Thus, the Chernobyl exclusion zone has appeared in the world. After the explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in 1986, life-threatening radioactive particles were scattered by the wind and settled on the territory of more than 200,000 square kilometers. Almost 8.5 million people were exposed to nuclear radiation. All lands within the radius of 30 kilometers from the explosion epicenter became unfit for human habitation. Hundreds of thousands of homes have been abandoned. Each of them is someone's homeland, lost forever. The village of Kriuki is among the depopulated settlements, one of the most polluted places. According to some unknown law of the universe, it was right here that a man, who devoted his whole life to ensuring that the fate of his homeland would not become the fate of our common home, the planet Earth was born and spent his childhood. Anatoly Yunitsky is an inventor, author of a new global concept of transport as a tool for transforming civilization. His name became known in 1982, when the journal Inventor and Innovator 
published an article about the general planetary vehicle. Uniski's idea is to build a special structure around the planet with a linear electric motor located inside a vacuum conduit, accelerating to the first space speed due to the centrifugal force the rotor of the engine can lift the structure into space, delivering into orbit about 10 million tons of cargo and 10 million passengers for each flight. Such transport will open up to humanity unprecedented opportunities for space exploration. It will be necessary to transfer all harmful production there into the inanimate space. Nature will be reborn, and limited opportunities for the development of solar energy will open up. Infinite spatial and raw resources will be available. The prospects of interplanetary and even intergalactic flights, large-scale industrialization of space, will become real. Work on the implementation of the idea took more than 40 years and became the meaning of Uniski's life. It required the search for specific solutions, technical, entrepreneurial, and moral. There were obstacles of officials, betrayal of friends, and misunderstanding of colleagues on his way. Everything was taken away from him several times, and he had to start again from scratch. However, he kept on moving forward all the time. Unitsky not only invented, but also substantiated his global idea and then began to implement it. He let it pass through him lived through his transport. The man who attempted to open space for humanity all over again. I don't remember my childhood well, because I had a weak memory since a child. I know my childhood from the stories by my mother and sister. She is three years younger and remembers childhood better than me. One of the first memories is a short period when we lived in Donbass. My mother worked in an underground mine pit uh, she used to take me to school. Once I went there very early in the morning. I was standing on the threshold for an hour in winter. Perhaps this is the brightest recollection from the early childhood. Our mother had to work from dawn from 5-6 a.m. till 10 p.m. She got tired so much that she didn't have time to go anywhere. For example, for mushrooms or berries in the forest. Only my brother and me went there. He woke me up at 4 in the morning. I cried. I was only five years old. But he said we would be the first in the forest. So we went there, found a step at the woodside and sat there continuing to sleep. When the dawn started, we were the first to pick up the best mushrooms. When we were going back to the village, about 8 a.m., people were only starting to go to the forest, and they were surprised at how the Unitskis were already returning with mushrooms. Our mother had a cow and two pigs. 
We also had to feed them, collect grass for them. We weeded the vegetable plot and added sorrel to the grass. Our task was to fill a basket with it. And I got so tired, it was at daytime, under the sun, that once I had a dream as if one cereal stem grew up high to the very sky. I took a ladder, climbed up with scissors and started to trim it from the top. It was because I was so sick and tired to collect this cereal in real life that I dreamt and saw it growing at home. Actually, we were brought up by ourselves. We recognized by our nature that our mother was a laborious woman, and it was imparted to us, especially to Anatoly. I mean mother's persistency to labor. Yuniski's childhood passed a difficult time, when the country was recovering after the war. His father left the family. His mother worked hard to support her family. At first, doing the most difficult mining job as a shaft sinker. Then, in the collective farm, their lives are sad and full of hunger, but the world around them is no less interesting. Humanity is on the threshold of the space age, and even in the remote village of Kruki, where they lived, they feel this anticipation of the new epoch. Perhaps my inventive activity had the greatest impact on the formation of my personality. I started to make inventions from the age of 5-6 years. It was interesting for me to make rockets using German black and white gunpowder. We had a German warehouse that was exploded by partisans. Gunpowder and shells were scattered around. I was fond of pyrotechnics. I was thinking about it in general. Actually, I started to understand the basics of physics at an early age. I developed my creative potential due to it. It was not always so good. Sometimes fires happened. I remember my launching a rocket in a village home with a thatched roof. I was a kid and launched a rocket right inside the hut. It hit a curtain that started to burn. I extinguished the curtain, made it into a bundle and hid from my mother. But it continued to smolder. If my mother didn't come into the hut, it would have probably been burned down. She has explained to me my wrong behavior using a belt. Later, when our family moved over to Kazakhstan, Near Baikonur Cosmodrome, we lived in the city of Nikolsk, presently Satbayev. Near Jeskazgan, I already made their two- and three-stage rockets. They flew up two, three kilometers high. The last rocket stage contained a living mouse that descended back by parachute. Naturally, I cared about it to come back alive, not dead. Therefore, I designed special pyrotechnic cartridges that shot it out of there. This whole story with rockets shaped me up as a personality and inventor.
The need forces the Unitskis to move over to mother's sister in Kazakhstan. It's easier to make ends meet together. They settle in the city of Nikolsk, presently Sadbaev, near the Baikanur Cosmodrome. Here, the inventor goes to the high school. School number three is the best one in the city. Everyone knows it, it is the best one. Some of its graduates became professors, doctors of philosophy and scientists. The proximity of the Cosmodrome creates a rich context for the interest to rocket modeling. The city is full of rumors about what is happening at Baikonur. And Unitsky also feels related to cosmonautics. Rock is blown up in mines located in the district and the remnants of explosives are thrown out. Unitsky uses them as raw material for creating his own rocket fuel. Then he learns to make gunpowder from materials on hand himself. He proceeds from simple structures to complex systems, carefully calculating each element. He dreams of becoming an astronaut or an aircraft designer. He is driven by the spirit of discovery. By that time, Gagarin had already made the flight in space. Unitsky's generation is determined to change the world. We are children of the generation that has won warfare. It was the first liberation of people. When our people, our fathers, understood that something depends on them, when they felt themselves relevant, Life was evaluated not by what you possess, what you have, but by the fact you are alive and you can invent something, solve something. Our generation was grown up greatly on a dream. That was 1961, Gagarin's flight. And before that, in 1958, the second satellite with a carrier rocket was launched. I don't remember when it was launched, it was either in 1957 or in 1958. I was about 10 years old then, and I saw it in the sky. We waited for it, we knew that something should fly by and we should watch. I saw it, I yelled, it's flying, and started to run. Uh, but the asphalt in the yard was laid unevenly. I stumbled, fell, and scratched my skin in many places. Knees and hands were in blood, tears were in my eyes. At the same time, I was watching that flickering carrier rocket. Such was the time. We have seen here for the first time how a rocket was flying. I remember it perfectly. At that time I started in the fourth grade. We were in the yard. Anatoly was riding a bicycle and I was playing with girls. It was flying low and created some divergent rings, becoming less with the motion upwards. I was scared and shouted, Anatoly, it's a war! We ran to the mother to the second floor, I was running and shouting, Mother, it's a war! Later she explained that there was a cosmodrome nearby and the next rocket was launched. 
And Natali became fond of modeling back there in the village, when together with his friends he went to the shelter trenches and collected old rounds of ammo with gunpowder. When we were arrived here, he got interested in modeling rockets. Uniski's passion for invention, science fiction, place of residence, and pension for analysis lead him to unexpected conclusions. A large-scale exit of humanity into space, space travels, and the discovery of new planets – all this is impossible to do with rockets. Rockets are an inefficient and dangerous transport. Originally created for war, they destroy the planet even when used peacefully. They blow up the Earth and the sky, causing damage to the environment and leaving space still inaccessible. I started to think about the planetary ecology long ago, in my school years. Once there was such an episode, my sister and I went to an outdoor cinema, where the screen was set towards Baikonur. We were sitting and watching a movie. It was at night. Suddenly a burning point started to rise there, and I understood that a rocket was launched from Baikonur. Well, it was not unusual. But when we went out of the cinema, in about one and a half hours, it started to rain so heavily that we walked in the water up to our knees. It is a semi-desert there. Rains are quite rare. I united these two factors, a rocket launch from Baikonur and deteriorated weather 200 kilometers away from it. I thought a rocket was a serious thing. Astronauts flew into space. The future depended on them, but how is it environmentally friendly and safe? I analyzed it when a schoolboy began to figure out the nature of the ozone layer. I found out that a rocket launch makes a hole the size of France in the ozone layer. One heavy carrier rocket can destroy up to 40 million tons of ozone. To restore 40 million tons of ozone, we have to spend billion dollars. That's why those who launch rockets should pay an ecological tax. They cause the colossal damage because the weather on the planet is created in the ozone layer. It absorbs up to 4% of the solar energy. The ozone layer also functions as a blanket that warms up the planet, preventing infrared radiation. Therefore, the influence of the ozone layer on the climate is 1,000 times stronger than that of man and the entire industry. But if not rockets, then what? The search for answers required knowledge, for which Unitsky went to Tumeny. Somewhere here, within these walls, he takes a closer look at the problem and gropes for a solution for the first time.
это время our Tumen territory was under exploration at that time. Lots of young people arrived to us here. So as to build cities and develop oil and gas reserves, we needed builders. At that time our city had only one industrial institute that trained builders at one faculty only. It was absolutely insufficient. Therefore, it was decided to create our institute for the current needs. Then first faculties started to appear. The first one was the Faculty of Engineering and Construction. Right after it, the Road Transport Faculty was set up. The people who began to work at those faculties and train future builders of our Tumen region arrived from various places at the invitation of the first principal, Michael Maltsev. He has gathered a very capable team that lived friendly. Since that moment, the Institute of Construction began to develop. The world of science opens up for Unitsky. He is interested in global problems and possibilities to solve them by engineering means. He sets himself the most difficult tasks to invent a means to go into space more perfect than rockets. Inventing a mode of transport that would be devoid of the disadvantages of all known modes of transportation, be it a train or a car, but would combine all their advantages. He sees around him the same inspired eyes of age mates next to him, heading towards adventures of life. To my opinion, I received a very good education. It may seem that there was nothing extraordinary. Young lecturers, about 30 years old in average, who went there for romanticism and flavor of taiga like me. However, all of them were intelligent. I made friends with many of them because I distinguished with my abilities. My favorite subjects were resistance of materials, descriptive geometry, physics, chemistry, advanced mathematics. Then my first love came. We had master classes where given some problems to work out during the lesson. So I did my problems and helped her to work out hers. The lecturers knew it, therefore, sometimes they expelled me from the classroom. Youth is unthinkable without love. Unitsky meets Galina. They study together, spend time together, Explore this unfamiliar city of discoveries. They had a student's wedding there. Mother came from Kazakhstan, I came from Tobolsk, where I studied, and father came from Mozov. We have all met at that time. Anatoly was in contact with the father, who later offered him to finish his education in Minsk. He said he would render some help if Anatoly studied in Minsk closer to him. He transferred to the Minsk Institute. Since 
Soon there will be three of them. A son will be born. In order to take care of the child and his wife, Yuniski is transferred to the correspondence department. At the Polytechnic Institute, he receives a diploma of engineer with a degree in highways. Despite the fact that studies have to be combined with work, his diploma project was recognized as the best at the faculty in 1973. Then he was distinguished during service in the army where, by the will of fate, he gets into the missile forces. After the military service, Yunitsky worked for a short time in a road construction trust in Gomin. But the specialty of an engineer does not correspond to his ambitions and interests of the inventor. He wants a lot more. Child's dreams of exploring space remained alive. In order to engage in science and invention, Yunitsky transfers to the Institute of Mechanics of Metal Polymer Systems under the Belarusian Academy of Sciences, where he passes the career from an engineer to chief of the patent and licensing service. He receives dozens of author certificates for inventions that are introduced into the economy and bring hundreds of millions to the state. In the period from 1979 to 1988, he became the best inventor of the Institute at the end of the year four times. And thanks to its activities, the Institute itself came out on top for inventions in the USSR. But this is not the main thing. In parallel with the official work, Yunitsky is updating the concept of general planetary vehicle. The idea is completed by 1977, and he submits the first application for an author's certificate for the most grandiose engineering structure in history. I was a schoolboy in the 80s. My father worked at the Institute of Polymers, to put it briefly. He used to walk on foot to the office. When he came back home, he proceeded with his inventions. He had his research at a work table with lots of documents and files. We lived in a one-bedroom flat at that time. Here in Gomel, Yunitsky works day and night. His thinking is filled with the possibilities that his invention can provide to mankind. He sees a new dawn of cosmonautics, but they do not agree with him. Time after time, Yunitsky is denied an author's certificate, bumping up against multiple arguments. The Earth is a geoid, not an ideal sphere. There are irregularities on it. You don't take into account the Moon's impact. No sufficient funds. No sufficient metals. Not enough concrete on the planet to build a structure along the equator. There were some arguments from the USSR State Committee on Innovations. They did not issue me the author's certificate because there would be not enough concrete and metal for the earth pass. Then I put forward my own argument that there was another simpler solution. All the supports for the overpass around the equator would need the same amount of concrete that was used for the construction of the dam at Sayano Shushinske hydroelectric power plant. So the concrete of one dam would be enough for all these supports. As regards the metal, I also found an argument that there was about one billion cars in the world at that time. If we place the cars side by side as bricks around the equator, they will make up a 100-meter wall. 
Wouldn't this metal used for cars be sufficient to build an overpass? Certainly, it would be sufficient. At present, this is the required volume of steel that is produced by the world's metallurgic plants within several days. As for the funds, it would need about 2.5 trillion dollars. But if we divide it by the population, which is about 8 billion people now, it will be the expense of less than the cost of an iPhone per capita. We all have mobile phones. Will a person refuse to give that amount of money to save himself and his children? He moves forward persistently and organizes the world's first conference on non-rocket space exploration. Several famous cosmonauts, scientists and enthusiasts from all over the world attended it. Environmental issues and the future of civilization are in the focus of the conference. The Belarus Film Studio has made a film about the event directed by Yuri Khashivatsky. He arrived here from Gomel, explained to me his idea about that wheel. Since my first education was thermal physics and mechanics, I understood it immediately. I liked it very much. All the calculations seemed to me very interesting. I understood that it was a real operating thing. I had 14 authors' certificates, therefore it was easy for me to understand. And it seemed to me a wonderful thing. Moreover, to my mind, the world at that moment started to search for a global project. This could have become a global project. Because a great number of people had to work it out. A great number of people had to maintain such project. A great number of countries would be interested to be a part of this project. For instance, the Chinese are developing now the Silkway, but string transport project is even greater. Look more attentively. Perhaps it is the beginning of the new stage in the development of our civilization. And the dawn of this new era rises up here in Goma. Few people guess that the future of the entire world is being designed here. It was a film which somehow transferred us and our idea about our future to some new technological era. When everything would change when people would become totally educated, when we would be estimable people in this world, when we obtain our corresponding place and niche. In other words, those were our dreams. That was the first time when the inventor has spoken so loudly and decisively and was heard. With the assistance of the USSR Cosmonautics Federation and the Peace Fund, the Star World Center is opened in Gomel. Its goal is to implement a program to save the Earth from the yoke of industry. Before that, he was engaged in other projects at work. On becoming the director of the Star World Center, he was able to spend all his working time on his main invention, general planetary vehicle. Naturally, the development and some scientific research proceeded faster. A team have been already gathering. 
They were like-minded people, so were also engaged with this project. Work at the Star World Center requires a lot of effort, but this is exactly what Unitsky was aiming for. And he takes up the task not sparing himself. The environmental problem has appeared on Earth because mankind had created a powerful industry. It came up to a contradiction with the biosphere. That's why environmental problems cannot be resolved in principle. Sooner or later, there will occur degradation of the biosphere, disappearance of a great number of living species, possibly including the human one. To save the humanity, to provide the possibilities for infinite development, this Earth's industrial power should be transferred beyond the biosphere into outer space. The purpose is to achieve self-sufficiency by performing scientific, design and engineering works for various enterprises and to be able to finance the program for creating the general planetary vehicle. The center simultaneously executes orders and conducts research on such topics as the need for space industrialization, possibilities and prospects for improving the efficiency of ground transport, sustainable urban development, digital currencies and much, much more. In the first days of his new career, he writes a letter to his mother. Hello, dear mother. Sorry, I haven't written to you for a long time. I spent all my free time on the preparation of the first conference Non-Rocket Space Industrialization that has completed its session in Gomel last week. I did the whole lot of work as the originator of this conference. It was attended by the pilot cosmonauts. They are sitting next to me on the photo. The conference was highlighted by the Central TV. Central newspapers wrote about it. It was a great event, the beginning of a new stage in cosmonautics. After the conference, together with the representative of the USSR Cosmonautics Federation, we went to the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, our village Kruki. It is a dismal view. Everything is covered with wild grass. There are even no dogs there. Empty bird nesting boxes. Destroyed houses with broken glasses. No our house there, just an empty place. One of our drivers who took us there remembers visiting our house with his family. The village of Kruki has the strongest radioactive contamination in Belarus. Mama, come to us for the summer. We can live in the country cottage. I am going to finish it completely this year. Radiation is normal there, as in Kiev, Gomel and Leningrad. When you decide to come to us, I'll send you money for the travel fare. Kissing you, the Unitskis.
Having seen with his own eyes what disastrous consequences the development of technologies can lead to, Yunitsky describes step by step what the world should be like, how it should change in order to avoid a tragedy. But everything is in vain due to the greed, bureaucracy and stupidity of those in power. His activities annoy the officials. The effectiveness of the Star World Center is in sharp contrast to the inefficient operation of state-owned enterprises. For example, the Harvester, created by Star World within just seven months, had twice the productivity at the cost 20 times lower than that produced at the Gomen plant with huge expenses. His political statements run counter to the government's official line. His cosmopolitanism is perceived as a threat, and they decide to get rid of Yunitsky. Intimidated, like-minded people turn away from him. He is removed from the post of director. He takes the briefcase and goes outside, for the first time losing everything that was created with so much effort. <laughs> You want to leave 30,000 people with guns and back to land with their work? You understand that we are going to the end of the I still plan to make some power. If you don't stop now, you'll be behind the bars. Yunitsky takes the briefcase and leaves. Then the whole world collapses. Yunitsky divorces his wife and remains almost alone in his struggle. Only his son supports him. The country is breaking up, plunging people into poverty. Major science-intensive projects are not needed by anyone, as well as science in general. Yunitsky is forced to somehow make ends meet and look for other, new ways to achieve his objectives. He needs a project that can be implemented in the foreseeable future and will bring funds to achieve the goal. He needs a business, and it appears soon becoming a part of the program to create the general planetary vehicle. The general planetary vehicle should be installed on an overpass. It should not be very high. However, it is 40,000 km long. If the overpass is made traditionally across the ocean, it will be madly expensive. I started to modernize the overpass I have made it in such a way that the whole overpass became a very lightweight and slender structure. Then I thought of transforming this structure into a mode of rails and put vehicles on them, let them run on it. String transport is the most efficient way to travel that has ever existed. Yunitsky sets himself the task of creating an ideal transport from the point of view of physics and fulfills it. Eco-friendly, safe, affordable. The first step on the way to the general planetary vehicle that will require for its operation a better transport infrastructure on Earth than the existing one. After a few years of hard work, the engineering feasibility study for the project is ready. During this time, he writes a monograph in which he analyzes in detail all the needed components of the technology. The time for practical implementation has come. He goes to Moscow in search of support and funds for the implementation of his plan.
he's short of money. He spends nights at a railway station, and at daytime he goes from office to office and knocks on all the doors. It was in year 2000. I was a ministerial official at that time. On April 16, Yunitsky came to me. It was about noon. He has explained the concept to me within 40 minutes. After that, it became absolutely clear on what he offers and what is the essence of string technologies. I received my first professional education at Kyiv Institute of Civil Aviation Engineers at the Aviation Equipment Faculty. My graduation thesis at the Institute was called Transport of the Future. The last phrase in it was that transport should meet all the standards of safety, environmental friendliness and low cost. This concept has not been realized to the date. It is neither magnetic levitation, nor high-speed railway, nor aviation, nor cars, because they do not meet today's requirements. It was written in 1987 just when UNESCO was already actively developing and doing it. On my part, it was some sort of intuition. When he came and explained it, we started to work out immediately the action plan. I was an official then. Therefore, we had meetings with all oligarchs, all major agencies. Then we have met with Sergei Shoigu, Minister of Emergency Situations, and some other ministers of the Russian Federation. At that time, we received a serious support from the Ministry of uh, Transport, Ministry of Economics, where Andrei Sharonov was the first deputy minister. He wrote a recommendation letter to the United Nations Habitat Program, which planned to allocate a considerable grant. Strange as it may seem, our further development was stopped by the Ministry of Science, which declared that this trend is not promising. Transport in Russia is already implemented. That's why it is not interested to develop it far. At the same time, we got acquainted with the governor Alexander Lebed, who supported us. However, Dmitry Tirohin played a key role in the further development of this transport. He was a very successful businessman. He got interested in this project. Actually, his company started a series of financing in the project in 2000. More than $1.5 million were invested by them. Then, active realization of a project in Ozora began. Construction of the first test site started there. First, as benches appears, the technology passed over from the concept category to industrial samples. First tests of a unique transport system took place in Azor, near Moscow. The speed of the new vehicle may reach up to 500 km per hour. The experts call it a string module, because the rail for its motion looks like a string. It is planned to use the strings to deliver to Moscow clean drinking water. Such railroad is only supposed to be built. We determined the stage to reach to get some logical development of a system. Naturally, at first we needed to do research and development, experimental samples, therefore we managed to do a full-size sample. It was the veteran Zil truck standing now in Marina Horka. There were some other models in the scale 1 to 10 demonstrated by Unitsky at various exhibitions, but everybody wanted to see how it would look in reality. Nobody believed that a heavy vehicle may run on such seemingly thin strings. Therefore, that experimental site was built in Ozora near Stupino. It was justified. When the Zil truck started to move along the strings, it was quite a different sensation for those who were interested and financed it at that time, including Gromov and Lebed. 
Actually, we proceeded logically, stage by stage. String transport is implemented in Azure. The first sample climbs along the overpass, proving the correctness of all the calculations made. It was really difficult to make this heavy truck to move along thin rails. And this is just the beginning. The clumsy Zeelon steel wheels is a prototype of aerodynamically perfect modules that carry passengers and cargo at 500 km per hour speed. Full automatic. Absolutely safe for people and for the planet. Moreover, it is also an ambitious Unitsky's business project. A fundamentally new system that surpasses both road, rail and air transport manifold. Again, it seems that the most difficult things are left behind. Numerous research and development works are being carried out, as well as testing of string transport models in a wind tunnel, projects are being implemented under two United Nations grants, and negotiations are being held with investors and officials. The Ministry of Transport of the Russian Federation organizes a special field session in Azure. Journalists, politicians and businessmen from all over Russia and other countries of the world came to examine the technology. Finally, even the government paid attention to the project. I am of the opinion that we should not only try to cage up with the other world as it was discussed today, but to surpass it in fundamentally new trends. I am confident our country needs today such a great ambitious super task. I think it may become the transport of new generation that can operate under any conditions, be the most efficient and environmentally friendly. This is Unitsky's string transport. Thank you. Your speech is very interesting. I think when some 200 or 150 years ago the steam locomotive was introduced, the experts in the field of horse-drawn transportation were also sitting, smiling and thinking it was some nonsense. However, later a whole sector of industry appeared based on it. By the way, these are just innovations, to be honest. There are serious ones. The enthusiasm didn't last long. One of the main investors, General Libet, dies tragically. His other partners terminate funding the project for personal reasons. After the presentation of string transport to the President of Russia, some unknown people demolished the test site in Azori within a few hours in a controlled manner. A plot of wasteland remains in its place. No one needs it since then. From here, Unitsky will travel to Kyiv, Khantimansysk, Sydney and dozens of other cities around the world. Everywhere he offers his own transport solution. He receives support and is betrayed at least twice. After one of these betrayals, he had a blood streak. He gets very close to the construction of string transport routes in Khantimansysk. However, External circumstances will interfere with the plans. The economic crisis of 2008. After each such event, his companions become disappointment, fear, new desolation and a new obscurity ahead.
знакомство произошло случайно. Our acquaintance happened accidentally. It was in summer in the Crimea. It was something that I hadn't seen before in other people's eyes. It was some meaningfulness. We talked about stream transport and non-rocket space exploration. The following thing cleared out. When I go, I attended classes in various hobby groups in the Crimea. One of such groups used to subscribe for journal Technology for the Yours. Since I like reading very much, I read constantly these journals at home after classes. As it turned out, I read the journals with Unitsky's articles in my youth days. В юношестве, да, я читала журналы там, где были статьи Анатолия Дардовича, и потом уже quite a long time I recalled it. Всплыло и вспомнилось. It was not right at the moment when I saw Unitsky. Certainly not. О, так это же я читала его статьи. Нет, конечно нет. Вот и для меня вообще. For me, the most favorite authors were all of those who wrote fiction. Какие-то авторы. Therefore, everything he talked about and the manner he spoke about it made me understand at once that it was a reality and might exist. But I always wanted to believe that it would happen during my life, that it is not a remote future only for our children and grandchildren, that we would also see it all. And now it happens that I help to bring it to life. Dreams really come true. She leaves her parents' home with him. She even sells the property that belonged to her to finance the activities of the Design Bureau share the hardships of the struggle, support him in the most difficult moments, give him two children, and invest all her talent and energy in the cause of Unitsky's life, taking on most of the managerial work, becoming today the general director of Unitsky Design Organization. In addition to his wife, Yuniski had another faithful companion at all times. A source of inspiration and strength. In the most difficult moments, he went towards nature. Sure grass, the swaying of the fish afloat, silence and thoughts. He continues to try to find someone who will support the project for several years. But in the end, he finally becomes confident 
that old toadyism with the government and business who created and controlled this obviously wrong world is useless. They don't need what he does. For whom then is he trying to do his utmost? For the family, for his beloved wife, for two beautiful daughters. Care for the family and care for the world are inseparable from each other. But what Yunitsky lives for is necessary not only for them, it is necessary for all, primarily for ordinary people, for those who do not participate in the global split-up of money and power, but who suffer from it, for those whose home, planet Earth, is being killed by officials and oligarchs. And he decides to address these people for help in implementing the idea designed to save the common home. He formulates the idea of creating a people's project and thus he makes the most important step on his way. It appears that the Crimea is such a place for us where we recover after rough patches in life. Anatoly Yunitsky used to go fishing for a whole day. He came back, sat down at the table and wrote down everything he thought. He went to bed at night, got up at 4 a.m. and left for fishing again. It continued for the whole summer. He described everything in writing and when we returned to Moscow, we invited several people who, to Yunitsky's opinion, might help to start it. When we discussed it all, we started to move forward. We are creating the greatest business for the entire history of civilization. The thing that was created by Stevenson, Ford and Boeing together. The fundamentally new transport sector is needed for all. For the mankind, every country, every city, every family and every person. Giving a chance to survive for yourself and future generations. Becoming a member of the largest business in the history of mankind. Ordinary people accept Unitsky's appeal. The idea of string transport and general planetary vehicle involves hundreds of thousands of people around the world. They invest in it as much as they can. From the wages they get at factories that poison their children, from the miserable pensions paid to them by the state that enriches itself by destroying their forests and rivers, from the stipends they get for voluntarily and hopelessly forming in themselves a part of the system that is inherently vicious and murderous for nature. This is their protest and their statement, and Unitsky's objective becomes a common goal. With the people's support, Unitsky manages to implement the idea of stream transport. Cost-effective, efficient, safe, affordable. The most perfect that ever existed. Freeing the earth from the grave of asphalt, designed to save millions of lives from death on the roads. Unitsky managed to come close to realizing his dream. It took about 40 years for it. There is work ahead on creating the general planetary vehicle, and although this seems impossible, Unitsky has already done something that seems impossible at first glance. So, who is he? A madman? A genius? What is there in the depths of the cosmos of a man who rediscovered space for humanity? He was always interested in the outer space. 
When we were children, our mother was very busy with her work. Therefore, we went to water vegetable gardens. He was three years older. When we went from the bus across the step to the vegetable gardens, I asked him question. Why are there stones as if faced with water here? You can find some shells here too. And he answered, in the beginning of creation the whole earth was covered with an ocean. All of it was under water. Everything was preceded with water. The hills were created by water. But I'm interested not in this. I'm attracted by the outer space. I ask, and what is there? And he said, there is infinity there. His positive qualities are his sense of purpose, uh, persistency, ability to find a way out from difficult situations. It allows to move forwards all the time. Engineering mind that makes it possible to work out all these complicated calculations, present and do it all. This is a genius of our time. He always says what he thinks, and people feel it, because when a person says the truth, it is felt, it is obvious, it is always obvious. A city madman, rain man, who, however, achieved certain success in his madness. May God help him to succeed in everything. He characterized himself long ago. The first thing he said at our first meeting was, I'm a city madman. Everything started from that. I recalled it right now. Yes, I would characterize him that way. At the moment when people are thinking about where and whom to flatter, only meatheads can think about string transport. A clever, honest and kind man. A genius. God for me is not someone from the Bible or Talmud, but the one who created this world. And we do not know who created it, why, how. The world in which we live appeared not by itself. This is the God for me. I don't know who he is, uh, but happiness for me is that I can live not for myself. For example, my surname, Unitsky, consists of three parts, uni, like uniting, t, transport, and sky, meaning transport uniting the sky. Maybe it is the initial predestination from my birth, and I follow it. I know I can create the safest transport on the planet for all people. And I can create transport that will transfer the industry to the sky, to the outer space. Thus all the environmental problems on the planet will be resolved. This is just T, transport, on the sky background. That means uniting the sky by means of transport. The ideas that changed the world in the past were always seemed fantastic to contemporaries. 
However, they got practical implementation through the efforts of engineers. <laughs>